on Prime Crime. He saw someone? Yes, I thought it was my apartment. I'm f***ed. Oh my god. I'm sorry. It's a police shooting hard to imagine. A reasonable mistake or murder? I was scared this person said if I was going to hurt me. And I'm so sorry. And a defendant who may not be what she seems. I do believe that she is re-traumatizing the family. Hey everybody, I'm Jesse Weber and welcome to Prime Crime. This is where we do a deeper dive into the most high profile and memorable true crime cases. There are a lot of dangers in the world and our home is always supposed to be the place where we're safe. But for one young man, it proved to be anything but. Get up, man. Yeah, this is Carla, where's your emergency? Hi. On September 6, 2018, in Dallas, Texas, police officer Amber Geiger returns back to her apartment complex after a 13-hour shift. But she doesn't go to her unit on the third floor. Instead, she ends up on the fourth floor. Hi, this is an um, off-duty officer. Um, can I get, I need emails. Um, uh, I'm in number. Um, What's your I'm address? The, I What's missed, going on? I missed, I'm an off-duty officer. I thought it was in my apartment, and I shot a guy thinking that he was thinking it was my apartment. Geiger claimed that she mistakenly thought she entered her apartment, when in reality, it was the home of her 26-year-old neighbor, Botham Jean. I think there were signs that uh, should have showed her that she was going to the wrong place. I mean, at the outset, uh, when she walks up to the front door, there's a red doormat that is not her own. Uh, that should have been a signal. Not only that, but entering into the apartment, it very much looked like any other bachelor's apartment or what you would expect in a bachelor's apartment to look like. There was an ironing board that was out. There were, uh, you know, pictures and hangings on the wall uh, that uh, presumably did not uh, look like the things in her own house. I thought it was my apartment. Yeah. I need, I need my new supervisor. Yeah. Hey, bud. Hey, bud. Come on. Then there are other subtle signs. So the amount of time that it takes to navigate from one floor to the other, something usually goes off in your mind. It's taking me a little bit longer than it normally does. And then further, you look at the totality of the mistakes, right? It may be all small things, but if it's 10 small things, at what point do you kind of wake up and, and understand that you're in the wrong place? Investigators would conclude that at the time Geiger entered the unit, Jean was on the couch eating ice cream. Evidence would even suggest that Jean may have been in a cowering or ducking position when shot. So then why did Geiger shoot him? Although she failed to clearly state this on the 911 call, she later said she thought Jean was an intruder and her life was in danger. I don't believe that she reasonably perceived a threat here. She entered into an apartment that was not her own. It didn't have the same doormat. Uh, presumably, the affixments and, and things on the walls uh, were not like her own. Not only that, he was not armed. Uh, maybe he spoke in a loud voice, but of course, that's because she was in his apartment. Concealment and cover should come before firing your weapon when possible. Tactically, the best thing would have been to back uh, out of the doorway and try to take cover, she had a radio, could have called 911 and so forth. Stay with me, bud. Oh, no. No. tired. Hurry. Was this Geiger's fault because she was overtired from a long shift or because she was distracted? The investigation would show that Geiger had been sexting with her partner and occasional lover, Officer Martin Rivera, sending messages such as, super horny today, and want a touch? In fact, Geiger was on the phone with Rivera as she pulled into her apartment complex. She was certainly distracted, but distracted to a point where you would enter an apartment that was the wrong apartment, think that someone's an assailant and kill them, that's quite a leap. Not to mention, she is an emergency service worker. That's why we give them so much uh, praise 
because they are constantly working under extreme conditions where they are a little bit tired, a little bit distracted, but that does not distract them from doing their job. As Geiger excitedly tries to explain what happened, listen carefully to what she says. He saw someone? Yes, I thought it was my apartment. I'm f Oh my God. I'm sorry. Geiger's 911 call was very interesting. Uh, she seemed to be very focused on the consequence to her. Okay, we have help on the way. I know, but I'm, I'm gonna lose my job. I thought it was my apartment. I thought it was my apartment. I could have sworn I parked on the third floor. Okay, I understand. No, I thought it was my apartment. I thought it was my apartment. Of course, she continues to reiterate that she thought it was her apartment. She thought it was her apartment. I think it was some 19 times. She talks about uh, parking on the wrong floor, which I don't know how she would know that if she had just shot someone. Seemed to me that she was getting together uh, her excuse uh, that she was going to say to the 911 uh, operator and whoever else uh, to justify this shooting of both on John. Oh my God, I'm done. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I'm so sorry. In fairness, a shooting is a life-altering event. The overwhelming majority of police officers go through 20, 25 years of service and never fire their weapons. And to shoot your weapon and to hit someone and know that that person is probably going to expire is a life-altering event. So she certainly did sound a little panicked and, uh, on the 911 calls. However, that's somewhat reasonable. Towards the end of the 911 call, we hear officers responding to the crime scene. That's when new pieces of the story come into focus. I thought they were in my apartment. I thought this was my floor. Okay, and the, where, where are you at right now? I'm inside the apartment with him. Hey, come on. What's your name? I'm Amber Geiger. Dallas police officer Amber Geiger shot and killed her unarmed neighbor Botham Jean inside his home. According to Geiger, she mistakenly believed Jean was an assailant in her own apartment. As she's on the phone with 911 dispatch, law enforcement rushed to the scene. Officers then race into Jean's apartment. While the responding officers desperately tried but ultimately couldn't save Jean's life, the audio and video at the time told a lot about what Amber Geiger did, or rather, didn't do. More than likely, she failed to render aid to both and John. It's just plain and simple. Hey, bud. Hey, bud. Come on. She's not administering any CPR or uh, anything like that. When the officers arrive, there's no blood on her. She hadn't really touched him. Neither is she asking for any advice from the 911 officer or, or discussing what type of medical aid can be given in order to save his life. Hey, bud, hey, bud, they're coming, there, bud. I'm sorry, man. As a police officer, if someone's injured, whether it's at your hand or the hand of another, it is your responsibility to render aid. It's the duty and responsibility of a police officer to protect the rights of an individual they are arresting so how could a trained police officer do this? When this shooting happened, the blame didn't just rest on Geiger. Jean's family filed a lawsuit against the city of Dallas, which at the time of this taping is still ongoing. We learned about the ratification of Amber Geiger's behavior by the Dallas Police Department. They provided her her training, her equipment. They retained her as an officer. Amber Geiger was asked a number of questions about training. Uh, she stated uh, under oath that she did not recall her CPR training. She stated under oath that she did not recall her de-escalation uh, training. So there were serious training issues uh, that we think led to the death of both of them. Amber Geiger talked about being extremely sleepy. Uh, she talked about the issues of uh, police officers having to work excessive overtime hours. Uh, those are issues that we believe places the city of Dallas on the hook. So it's very interesting when we look at the police department. They're not necessarily responsible. 
What could the police department in and of itself have done to avoid this situation? Not much, not much. They could require police officers to leave their firearms at work. Uh, most police departments do not do that because the reality is we do in many cases want police officers to be able to take action off duty if they see a crime being committed. The city of Dallas has been exposed enough to put a, a significant pressure on them to want to make this case go away in terms of the settlement. There would be a lot of explaining to do, but the person we wanted to hear from the most was the shooter herself. It was the only option that went through my head. I was at home and I- Ma'am, will you answer my questions? Yes, sir. Amber Geiger, the former Dallas police officer who shot Botham Jean to death in his own apartment, was arrested and ultimately charged with murder. During her 2019 trial, the question for the jury was whether Geiger's mistakes and actions were criminal, a question that became all the more complicated when Geiger took the stand. And why did you shoot Amber? I was scared he was going to kill me. Amber Geiger took the, the stand in her trial, and I think that was kind of a no-brainer. Quite often, we, we, we don't want defendants to take the stand. In this case, she had to. She had to tell her side of the story because the evidence was overwhelming. I heard moving around inside my apartment. What type of moving around? Like loud shuffling, someone walking. What did the figure do after you said, let me see your hands? He started coming towards me. Did you hear anything as he was walking towards you? He, there was a loud yell. He was yelling, hey, 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 in an aggressive voice. Okay. The defense's case was entirely turned on whether her mistake was reasonable. If her mistake was reasonable, then everything that flowed from the mistake was just simply that, a mistake, and it was excusable. Why did you fire? <laughs> I was scared. I was scared this person said if I was going to hurt me. And I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Whether or not this was an accident, look, I just can't see it. She went to this house, I saw the door open, the doormat was different, the accoutrements in the house were different, there was a different person in the house. I, I don't see how that is reasonably perceived as a mistake. I kind of didn't buy it. She is a police, or was a police officer, did somewhat work against her. What do we think of police officers? We think of those are folks who have some type of heightened sense of awareness and where they are. When the prosecution questioned Geiger, they tried to show the jury just how irrational she acted that night. You should have taken a position of cover and concealment and got help. And instead you decided to go in. Yes, I did go in. You had a police radio on you, didn't you? I did. When law enforcement officers encounter a circumstance, where they might be confronting somebody in some type of illegal behavior, such as a burglary. Uh, you know, the idea is not for them to rush in Rambo style uh, and confront a burglar, uh, because that puts them in danger uh, that they don't necessarily need to be in. Then Geiger dropped a bombshell. When you pulled that trigger, you intended to kill Mr. John. He was the threat, yes, sir. Will you answer my question? When you aimed and pulled the trigger at Mr. Jean, shooting him in center mass exactly where you are trained, you intended to kill Mr. Jean. I did. I literally, my hand went over my mouth when I heard that. I don't think I've ever heard a police officer testify that they intended to kill someone. I've heard police officers testify they, have int they intended to stop the threat. They intended to protect themselves, protect someone else. Police officers are not trained to kill. How do you feel what you did, Mr. John? I feel like a terrible person. I feel like a piece of crap. I hate, I hate it every, I hate that I have to live with this every single day of my life. And I ask God for forgiveness, and I hate myself every single day. She absolutely showed a high level of remorse. It wasn't remorse just because she was going to go to jail. This was something that she didn't in an outcome that she didn't intend. 
I feel like I don't deserve the chance to be with my family and friends. I wish he was the one with the gun that killed me. I never wanted to take an innocent person's life. And I am so sorry. This is Amber Geiger's testimony for me uh, seemed a little bit contrived. She was very focused uh, on herself um, and uh, what was going to happen to her. Uh, of course, there were tears um, that were being shed. And, uh, you know, it's hard to watch uh, someone hurting. But it, it wasn't entirely moving for me, given the gravity of the mistake and the life that she'd taken. We, the jury, unanimously find the defendant, Amber Geiger, guilty of murder as charged in the indictment. No outburst. I was surprised by the verdict. It is very rare that law enforcement officers are even charged, let alone convicted. I would have to say I was not surprised by the verdict. I did not hear any reasonable arguments as to the reasonableness of her mistake. Well, I think that this case stands for the proposition that everyone will be held accountable. It doesn't make any difference what your profession is or who you are. We're going to handle it appropriately and fairly, and we think that a Dallas County jury did the same thing. The trial itself was dramatic, but what happened at sentencing was something entirely unexpected. Quite frankly, I've never seen anything like the end of this trial. Think all court shows are the same? We're talking about your father. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Think again. Judge Caprio rules with common sense. I was having contractions. I was rushing to the hospital. Inspector Quinn, what does justice demand? Jail? <laughs> and compassion. I'm going to take the circumstances into consideration. The best court experience I've had. Clearly, Judge, he's been in a court before. Get caught in Providence. Hi, I'm Dan Abrams. In the exploding legal and true crime genre, Law and Crime is the only network that has it all. Good evening and welcome. This is a complicated case. Don't really jump to conclusions. Welcome to Prime Crime Tonight, another day of drama between both sides. From multiple live trials daily to original and compelling programming, the Law and Crime Network is everywhere, and we invite you inside the jury box. This is Law and Crime. This is not about hate. It's about being scared that night. Former Dallas police officer Amber Geiger was convicted of murdering her neighbor Botham Jean in his own apartment after she claimed she accidentally entered the wrong unit. When it came to sentencing, the state introduced new evidence, the racially charged text message history of Geiger. In one message, she arguably pokes fun at the death of Martin Luther King Jr., and in another, criticizes black officers. Her text messages reveal that she's definitely got some issues of bias, or at the very least, some type of insecurity about uh, being around and or working with black people. The same jury that convicted Geiger now had to determine her sentence, which ranged from five to 99 years in prison. Their decision? And assess the defendant's punishment at 10 years imprisonment in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. In addition the sentence in my mind was a little lenient. The jury uh, took some mercy on her, probably because they felt sympathy for Ms. Geiger. I think this sentence was appropriate. It goes far beyond prison. Her life is changed, uh, if not ruined. I think that this is going to haunt her. Uh, we respect the jury's decision. Uh, we had a diverse jury from across the county. They heard all of the evidence and they made their decision based on the facts of the case and we respect that. But the surprises wouldn't stop there. After the sentencing, Jean's brother Brant took the stand and in an incredible twist, he asked for the court's permission to give Geiger a hug. Quite frankly, I've never seen anything like the end of this trial, the sentencing phase. I was in shock. I was in complete shock. I believe that helped them to let them know that they were forgiving her because so they would not have to carry that portion of the pain around with them. It's just amazing that that young man could find that amount of forgiveness and love in his heart. 
the best qualities of his brother were showing through him at that moment. Then Judge Tammy Kemp followed suit and not only hugged Geiger, but lent her her Bible. When I saw that initially, the judge giving uh, Miss Geiger a hug and, and the Bible, I thought it was a little much. But uh, again, maybe the, the testimony of Miss Geiger really made a lasting impression on everyone in that courtroom. I don't think there was any evidence that showed that she's an inherently bad person. The judge obviously felt that she was not an evil person, and she responded what I feel was in an appropriate way. I don't have any problems with what the judge did. At the time of this taping, Geiger has appealed her case, arguing she shouldn't have been convicted of murder. Rather, her legal team says she should either receive an acquittal or a conviction on the lower charge of criminally negligent homicide and be resentenced. I don't see her being successful at, at all. Courts don't like to overturn jury verdicts, especially in this type of case. When we talk about this criminal negligence standard, it means that there was something that one should have known and they didn't know. I don't see how the charge could be negligence if she herself on the stand said she intended to kill someone. It may be a dangerous slippery slope for her. You know, asking to be resentenced, maybe she gets resentenced to worse. I think the fact that she appeals on those grounds, uh, that she believes that this should be, the conviction should be thrown out, is evidence that she is not repentant uh, and that she does not really feel sorry. And it really, uh, you know, draws some question to the tears that she shed in trial. Uh, I do believe that she is re-traumatizing the family who is trying to move on with this and showed a lot of grace and dignity uh, towards Ms. Geiger, as if the mercy and or the grace that was shown to her was not good enough. Uh, and in some regards, it may be a tad shame. The death of Botham Jean is as heartbreaking as it is scary. And there are a lot of takeaways from this story. But when you think about what happened at the sentencing, a big one for many is you can forgive, but never forget. That's all we have for you here on Prime Crime. Leave us your comments on Instagram and Twitter with the hashtag Prime Crime. As always, thank you for joining us. And until next time, be safe.